After this video, all pianists, violinists and organists will hate me. But I want to prove to you that Bach is the most accordion composer. The great composer lived 300 years ago, but he was so hardworking that he left a legacy that would endure for many years, having written more than a thousand compositions. And these are not just short pieces less than two minutes. Some of his works can last 40 minutes and some even 3 hours. By the way, Bach had 20 children. As I said, he was hardworking. The man loved things on a grand scale. And for which instruments did Bach compose? For all that existed at the time. Organ, harpsichord, violin, cello, flute and others. But what about the accordion? The accordion appeared several centuries after Bach's death. And it all basically starts in approximately 1965, when the Russian accordionist Yuri Kazakov first performed Bach's Toccata and Fugue in D minor on the accordion. Okay, you might say that it doesn't really sound much like an organ, but this was still several years before the modern prototype of multi-timbral concert accordion appeared. Here is how the same piece sounds on a modern accordion. It becomes clear that any of Bach's organ works will sound worthy on the accordion. Of course, accordion cannot always compete with the majestic power of the organ or its range of colors, but it has its own advantages – compactness, clarity of sound and breathing. If the first point is obvious, then what do clarity of sound and breathing mean? Clarity of sound means that under equal acoustic conditions the accordion sounds slightly clearer than the organ, making the music more understandable. Breathing is defined by the ability to make diminuendo or crescendo on a single note. like a violin. So, in a way, the accordion is like a mini organ with a bow. And this bow is the bellows. This provides the ability to animate Bach's organ works. For example, a fragment from the Toccata and Fugue in D minor. On the organ it would sound more flat and at a consistent dynamic level. Something like this. On the accordion, as I mentioned earlier, I can add breathing. By making small crescendos and diminuendos, I can add a bit of life. Just a little, but it already sounds a bit different. I'm not saying that it's better than on the organ, but it's something new. The same applies to harpsichord music, which is also performed on the modern prototype of the harpsichord, the piano. Moreover, thanks to the chin registers, it's possible to change the timbre right during the performance, which also adds more color. For example, Prelude and Fugue in C minor from Bach's Whole Tempered Clavier. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
something interesting to the music we are used to hearing on the piano and make it sound different, make it sound new. Violin. And here it might seem we have no advantages in sound. The violin has an exceptional timber, a wide range of bowings and playing techniques and of course it has a bow. But for most pieces the violin requires accompaniment piano, string quartet, chamber or symphony orchestra. The accordion, however, has a left hand that allows solo performances of pieces for which the violin would need an ensemble. You might say, how can one left hand replace an entire orchestra? Well, okay, in that case, we can make an accordion duet. We close our eyes and hear an orchestra. <laughs> Perhaps you have gotten the impression that I want to prove that the accordion is the best instrument in the world. No. I love the organ, piano and violin, and these instruments play every day in my headphones. My goal is only to prove that the accordion deserves to stand alongside these beautiful instruments. And I think Bach would be happy about that. What do you think? 